to episode one of the Warrior Holic. So after many years of uh, being a bit of a keyboard warrior there, chatting with other people about the Warriors on Facebook, I decided to create the Warrior Holic persona this season. Uh, get a little bit more involved making content, doing radio interviews, um, hopefully participating in a few podcasts, um, and just generally like sharing, you know, my passion for the Warriors. I'm not a uh, expert on the art of NRL by any sense of the imagination, but I do love the sport. Been following it since 1988 when it first came on TV here. Was originally a uh, Tigers fan before patching over uh, to the Warriors when they came into the NRL back in 95. So as you can see by the production today, hey, I'm not going to get excited and spend millions of dollars um, with filters and audio and the like. This is just going to be done on the good old trusty iPhone. I'm trying to get them done in one uh, clip so I don't have to do too much editing. But yeah, so today I'd kind of like to start off talking about Andrew Webster. So some of you, you know, I've had a bit of a chat with, do know that I train leaders for a living, I'm supporting companies who need to, need to go through some large sort of transformation. Um, and I coach their leaders and CEOs on how to make that happen. So I do have a bit of an insight on what it takes to, to coach and lead, um, not through a sporting sense, though I have uh, coached a few um, professional sporting players over my years through their transition from bring, being professional rugby players into business. So from that aspect, I'd like to kind of take a look at the insights or the snippets I've seen from Andrew Webster over the past few months that have got me really excited. To be honest, you know, it's been a long time since I've genuinely been confident about the um, coaches the Warriors have brought in. You know, from the first part is the communication style has generally been very convoluted or, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's very difficult to follow what they're trying to say or what they're trying to achieve from an outside perspective. You know, who knows what they do on the ground with the players. But from day one, the very first interview I ever saw from Andrew Webster, clear, concise, um, purposeful in everything he had to say, talking about the big picture and how he broke it back down into micro goals of what they needed to achieve in every session and of every day to, to reach the ultimate goal of the Warriors being a su successful development franchise. I love the fact that he didn't talk about you know making the eight as a, a milestone this year. He said, if you're in this game, you've got to be in there believing that you can win the comp. So the Warriors are in there to, to win the comp this year. Whether they do or not, I don't think we judge you know, that as a success. What I want to see is sustainable progression from the team. I want those guys to be playing with a passion that exceeds what I show towards them as a fan, what our, you know, our supporter base do. I want to see commitment in, in, in every tackle. I want to see us defending that line as if our life depends on it. And when you hear what um, Andrew Webster you know, talks about in the way he's trying to lead the team, everything shows me that that's what he's working towards. You know, It's not just about winning games, it's how you go about winning the games. Hearing his um, critique of the first trial game against the Tigers, you know, a lot of fans were all excited thinking you know, that, that Webby Ball, we're seeing the signs of commitment, we're seeing expansive footy, you know, we're seeing the boys defending our line. We thought that they'd, you know, they've turned a corner and they'd played well, but you could clearly see that he wasn't happy with some of the key aspects of the, of the game that they were working on. So that shows me that you know, he's not a guy who gets you know, overly excited quickly, but he's probably not a guy who's going to get all pissy and sort of you know, get angry and you know, kick, kick chairs around like we've seen from a lot of other coaches over the years. So probably the key aspects, you know, he, he talked about in a podcast with Rue and, uh, sorry, the other guy's name doesn't... Um, jumped to my mind last night in a live interview for an hour that when they first started out the season, him and his coaches identified four key areas that they believe were vital to be a successful NRL franchise. He didn't articulate what they particularly were. Um, obviously, he doesn't want to give away the secrets, but breaking it down into areas of the game that can be tracked and defined as KPIs for the team and focusing on those throughout the preseason shows that he's got a logical approach. And if I look at the game that we've, we've seen the SG ball game so far in the first trial, you get the impression one of those will be about um, effort on defence. You know, there was a much more um, strong, balanced effort in, in defence across the both teams there defending our line. We dropped the ball a couple of times and let in two quick tries against the Tigers. But other than that, I think we saw that hard and effort in defence. I think that'll be one. Uh, he talks about speed across the ground between plays or you know, between tasks on the field. So that's one of the reasons he's going for a small mobile pack behind um, Adam Fenor Blake. So you can see that he wants those guys off the ground and back into the line faster than any other team in the 
in the competition. I think that's what we saw from uh, Penrith over the past couple of years is their, their fitness and their intensity and speed off the line or into position is, is really important. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, I think over the you know, past three, four, five seasons, the Warriors have been a bit slow. They haven't appeared to be fit, fit enough. Early signs is uh, that they are looking fitter. They maintain that intensity. That kind of leads into the second area for me is like line speed. We're too passive. Traditionally, we wait for the opposition to come to us. I saw both the SG ball team and the, the first trial game that we were up off that line in their face, taking the time away from the opposition, not letting their forwards get momentum. Another key area I think that they've been working on that you know has been a struggle for me is like dominating the ruck. So by bringing in um, you know the, the association with City Kickboxing there in Kaikata, France, there yeah, um, as a wrestling trainer, that we need to dominate that ruck and, and push it to the limit where we're not getting penalised for overly holding down, but like the likes of the Storm, being able to control that speed, get our guys back into position and ready to launch off that line, particularly with the new team meter rule. That's going to be a key for me, and I think that's one of the areas that they'll be focusing on. And probably the last one is... Um, being able to deliver the fundamentals under fatigue, you know, eliminating as many as possible of unforced errors. You know, you're going to create errors when you play an expansive type of footy, but it's those unforced errors. You know, we saw that, I think it was the first set in the, um, the trial game against the, the Tigers the other day, a drop ball or a lost ball in contact. Unforced errors we need to control, and that's something that's always been a bugbear of me with the Warriors is not having our fundamentals sorted. So I believe, you know, from what he's been talking about, the way they've um, built fitness through footy rather than just running hills in the off-season, I think we would have spent a lot of time on the fundamentals, you know, control of the ball, playing the ball properly, not losing that ball, you know, dropping it on your toe or whatever, or trying to put it on the ground and get it up too fast and losing it. Those things there we can control. You know, we can't control the odd miss pass when we're trying to spin it wide, you know, in an expansive game. And we want to, you know, not want our boys to be afraid of taking that respect. The fundamentals under fatigue, that's something the Warriors have struggled with for a long time, but through both the SG ball game and the first trial, I saw an improvement there, so I hope that's one of his four um, attributes or the you know, areas of the game that they've been drilling and drilling and drilling over the postseason. I like the way that he's talking about not having a leadership group. He says everyone has to be a leader. If you're not prepared to step up and, and show your leadership skills, you shouldn't be in the team. They've got one captain. I don't like clubs that are going for three or four captains that you've got no one clear person showing the direction there. Um, it's good that that's Tohu. So let's not you know, have 10 or 12 guys standing around looking at each other, looking for direction on the field. You know, everyone's got to stand up, know their roles, and Tohu's going to lead the way. I'm happy with that approach. So the other key aspect that I've heard is having the coaches focus on positions and individuals rather than kind of having a, a defense or attack coach this kind of year so I think that'll be interesting um, one thing I've always sort of wondered about is you know these guys are called coaches and my definition of coaching is not telling someone how to do it it's getting them to figure out themselves asking the right question to get players or uh, you know employees to think about their own performance and identify their own areas of opportunity to improve but then coming up with a structured way to improve those skills that um, that are not good enough. And it sounds like that's something that they're working on now with this assistant coach working on a small group of players. Every day after, you know, their sessions, they're going into the Stacey Jones room and doing their own video review and identifying the, the areas of improvement. So it's one thing to identify them, but I'm really confident that he'll be the kind of coach who's getting the team to realise how to fix those um, areas or skill-based areas of the game. I don't think you can really coach attributes, which is, you know, if someone doesn't have the heart and desire, it's pretty hard to make them do that. But skills and competencies can be drilled and improved. So I hope that's something they're really focusing on is like getting the, the players to become aware of their own skill and competency weaknesses and drilling them on how to fix it, putting in those extras. So, you know, do I expect miracles this year? No. Am I excited? Heck yes, more so than I've been in probably five or six years. One, by the signings we bring in. They're not superstars, but they're all hardened professionals who genuinely appear to want to be at the Warriors for the right reasons. You see the passion in their eyes every time they talk. You can see the effort when you see videos of them in the training. Really excited to see how our top boys, you know, these new um, 
new signings and chans and um, Dylan Walker and Barnett go this week um, and near quarter out there against the Storm. Um, so from the players we've brought in, from the coaching staff we've got there, I'm genuinely excited. My key um, judgment will come. Are they more passionate than, passionate than me? Do they want it more than me? Because I want it a lot. And I'm doing this for free. They're out there getting paid. So let's see that they're out there delivering at a passion level that us Warrior fans follow them. Again, look forward to sharing a bit more content over the year. Mate, I'm not a professional in front of the camera, but hopefully you enjoy like the average Joe uh, take that I give on this. Look forward to working with some of the other uh, content producers and making some interesting stuff for you Warriors fans to get into. Stick with me, the Warrior Holic, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Up the Mighty Warriors. All in for 2023.